Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be disassembling this BMW motorcycle ABS pump. This is a servo pump, super complicated. I've never had any of, I've never ever taken one of these apart before. So we're going in this blind together, but without further ado, let's get to it. So uh, let's just take some stuff apart. This pump here was uh, actually tested bad so it was off of a i'm not taking apart a good pump these pumps can be quite quite expensive so uh i wouldn't wouldn't take apart a, a known good pump but this one was removed from a bike uh r1150 rt and i forgot what fault codes it had i took it off a couple years ago okay so there's your these are your fluid level sensors that obviously plug in here. So as your fluid level goes up and down or whatever, this floats, completes a circuit, it'll throw a light if your fluid level is ever too low. So that's cool, set all that stuff aside. Inside here we have like some, it actually looks super clean in there, as it should I guess, it's just brake fluid in there. Um, some sort of pistons or something. Uh, let's get this control box off here on the end. Okay. So, um. Looks like, okay, we need to pop these wires off and then that one pop off there. No, it looks okay. Here we go. I need to get this use this bracket off here on the bottom. Okay, so I'll pop this off. Okay, these are the power cables there for the, uh, looks like uh, some little servo motors. How are these held on? Looks like they just pull straight out. I guess it really doesn't matter if I break it. This thing's bad anyway. <clears throat> Looks like it just comes straight out. Yep. Just hasn't been off, I'm assuming, in its entire life. So, there we go. And then same with these. That pops off, that pops off. And uh, there's our... The computer, I guess the brains behind the operation. And that kind of reveals what we got going on under here. Okay, so now we'll, we'll worry about these bigger fasteners under here later. Let's uh, see what's going on here on the other side. Let's get these four here off. Looks like we could pop this little cover off. Hmm. Might need a screwdriver to help pry that off. All right. All right, uh, I'm not sure what we got going on here, but there's two little O-rings there. Obviously this is an O-ring and this kind of, I wonder if these are little pad, like little pressure sensors. This goes like that. Then there's a wire that goes all the way through, which is that wire. So we got that piece off. Let's throw that in our parts bin. What else can we take off? Um, I guess the next step is getting off these uh, larger gold ones here. Big long screws, set those aside, and look what we got here. So now, 
Um, hmm. This can't come off because these are held on, looks like, from the bottom there. Uh, maybe this can come. Be, oh, yeah, here we go. So this is... Oops, the shaft just fell out of here. Oh, it looks like there's a shaft. This shaft is actually right here. And it's gonna be interesting to kind of tear this thing apart. And when we get inside here to try and determine what the heck I guess was going on in here. You can see it's a little gummed up there. I'm not sure if that little debris in there would have caused um, our issues. But this is a very common failure mode on these. Let's uh, pop, there's four bolts in here. Let's pop these four off. So now this actually looks like the same kind of uh, pressure sensors, or little pads here. I'm totally guessing on what, what I think that is. Maybe you could let me know in the comments if someone's more familiar with these things, but they're little, uh, I don't know what they are. They look like little pressure sensors or something. I don't know what this is here, but that goes down like that. They're little like, they feel like they're made out of like ceramic or something, but that sits in there. They seal against these O-rings and obviously whatever happens there, brake fluid pushes up against that. I think we have this side of things all disassembled. There's no screws that we can remove aside from these bleed ports. I don't really care about the bleed ports. Hmm, interesting. And then this is just a little pressure doohickey thing. I'm assuming a pressure doohickey thing. Not sure. So now with this thing, looks like these can come out. These are just like tubes that are straight through with a hole in the center. Kind of weird, set those aside. Let's talk, take these two large, uh, large Allens here off. Oh geez, those are spring loaded. Very interesting, very interesting. So those are just a weird through Allen there. Again, I really haven't seen anything too alarming jump out that would scream that this thing's bad. And then, oh, these look like they would come out. <clears throat> okay, this, oh, look at that. Okay, these come out. It's a little gummy in there, but again, I wouldn't say it's like too alarming quite yet. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to try and, there it goes. Hmm, these seem like a little electric servo motor. Yep, you can see all the, the windings in there. These are obviously not disassemblable without, I'm sure with a hammer I could disassemble these. Same thing over here, weird stuff, not sure. I mean, I guess if one of these O-rings in here was failed, it would be uh, cause a failure. Oh, these are like, have a hardened coating or something on them. Again, everything in here looks very clean and uh, What else? We got some O-rings here. One O-ring. 
Hmm, what is this? No, that looks, all these O-rings look pretty good. Like the whole assembly in here, some spacers. There, there, could use this like a, a wedding ring. <laughs> Ooh, we can get some all, all sorts of springs and stuff in here. Springs and little needles. Not quite sure. I got a new respect for people that rebuild these things. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Using a T15 Torx. Okay, just doing some thinking here, and I think what needs to happen is this machined piece here needs to be separated from this piece so that I can access to like that screw, obviously, because I can't fit my tool in there. So we need to somehow pry this apart. It shouldn't be held on with anything, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, there it is. Keep in mind, this is a junk pump and people who are offended that I'm ruining this pump should not be because it was going in the trash anyway. If you really want it that bad, I guess just comment on this video and I'll send it to you for free. How about that? If someone doesn't want it to go to waste, I think I might need to get a hammer and tap tap that off. Oh yeah, that's definitely working. Oh geez. Oh geez. Okay, now I think we got some like debris there. That could be from like some brushes in the motors. Let's see, I think we might be onto something on why this pump is failed. Set that aside. This one kind of came out, obviously. This is just a, a magnet. Or not a magnet, but a little electric motor. Doesn't smell too burned, but that's what we're working with there. Okay, I bet you that's right there why this pump was failed. Look at all those that debris in there. All that just garbage. Looks like right there. That right there, I bet you, is why our pump failed. The brushes right there are just totally gone. Let's look at the other one. Here's our other side. Ooh, first off, these magnets are significantly stronger. And look at that in there. I mean, it's still kind of crusty, dusty, but it's sure in way better condition than the uh, the other side. Oh, there we go. Way better condition than the other side. Still pretty bad, but those I guarantee you are the issue on why this pump why this pump failed. So let's look at this one. Look at that in there. It's all there's definitely got some brake food in there. Um, but that right there is why the pump failed for sure. The windings are all full of garbage. Here's the other one, much better condition. Can do a little side by side. I'm assuming this one's bad, but I don't think you can buy these. So it's all going in the trash. Now on this piece here, looks like just some seals. I bet you what event would happen is one of these seals went out causing um, brake food to leak into those brushes. So then we have these uh, things here that are actually like kind of crimped on on the outside. On this one, I just kind of bet tried bending them out of the side. I used a little hammer to tap them and they seem to be 
All right, so all this is is just a tube that was crimped on with a spring and this little piston here. So that's all that is, nothing too crazy there. I would, I definitely thought about uh, adding a service that I would rebuild these for customers, but this is the first one I've ever taken apart. And uh, safe to say, I will not be have adding that service to my uh, bag of tricks. But you can see what the heck goes on in these things. This thing is junk. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily think we need to take this apart any further. Pretty much got it down to the bare body here and uh, I think we determined the failure mode so if you are have one of these pumps at home and you are thinking about taking it apart to see if you can repair it I bet you likely what's going on is the brushes are bad and it just needs a new set of brushes and I bet you you could take this apart without taking it this much apart to get these motors out and get these brushes repaired but or just do it yourself it doesn't look that hard it's just a standard electric motor this is like a scaled down version of what your starter motor looks like so thank you very much for watching and if you made it this far and you like my videos please hit that subscribe button but as always have a safe ride